All right, I got the part in the lathe here. This is uh, where we cut this off. Hollow DOM, quarter inch wall. If anybody watches uh, Joe Pye's channel, I recommend you go check it out. Go uh, click that up there. He's, he's actually a real machinist and knows what he's doing. He recently did some videos on clamping tubing in a uh, three jaw chuck or really any chuck and how you can influence your part by squeezing on the different corners. So one of the things I did, I brought a tense indicator out here and I, I was pretty sure that this was probably okay because it is fairly thick wall. Um, but I put a tense indicator on here and I cranked down a, you know, a little harder than I, I normally would to see what it would do. And it does deflect about two or three tenths of an inch. So I'm not too worried about that, especially as I'm doing the parts out here. Uh, two or three tenths, I think, is well within the tolerance for these parts. I went ahead and set up all of my tooling. So I'm going to do this mostly, I think, with uh, high-speed steel, at least the, extra, the outside portions of it. Um, I got me a good high-speed steel bit for doing the outside. I got my cutoff set up. Got a boring bar, and I also have this carbide tip, both of these carbide, and I'm not sure which one I'll be using to actually cut the initial very outside taper, which will be this one, and that'll actually happen once I flip the part around, which when I flip the part around, then I may have issues with the deflection since it's going to be smaller overall. But we'll see what the deflection is at that time. The rest of these, I have my my custom made tool here that has my 45s already cut into it, and then it will be able to go onto the inside and cut all of my 45s. So this will be kind of like this coming around. So the tool is going to be coming up and cutting this part here and this here. Alright, so let's see how I can do. And for the first operation, we'll go ahead and face this off, clean it up nicely. here and kind of hit a little bit with a file and actually kind of missed uh, hitting that chamfer there so let me hit that now. That's better for that. All right next up is going to be the tool that I ground in the last video. And I'm going to come in and I'm just going to chamfer this edge here.
next one. So for the, the next part, I actually need to go in. So the point of my tip needs to be approximately 230 thousandths over from this edge. So this edge is about 5 thousandths over its final dimension. So we're going to go 235 over from that edge. So we'll go in 1, 2, 35. Now I'm going to come back until I just touch and then I can set my y-axis zero. Let me get that set. Right there. And then that puts me at zero. looking at my part, I didn't really think about it. I've got this measurement, I've got this measurement, I've got this measurement. I don't have from here to here. So I need to uh, do some math to figure that out. Alright, so my next dimension, I actually have to bring the tool in 113 thousandths. And then I need to go over that way, 275 thousandths. So I'm going to go ahead and zero this. All right, I got my dimensions. Let's try it. Fifty-four and a half. Hit it within a half a thou. I'm going to call that good. It actually feels like it went easier than I expected it to. It's a little bit scary, I suppose. The insides look really close. I do have a little bit to take off here, and I think that will actually bring everything in to where it's supposed to be. I can go ahead and part this guy off, flip him around, set him up to cut this guy, which I've already got the compound set at the right angle. Too much stick out on my 
part off play. Once it got through uh, the little bit of eccentricness to it, it hit that, you know, it cut through, then I think it came around and hit that hole and uh, slammed into the blade and snapped it off just like that. I'll have to remember that on the next one. For now, I can uh, finish this off on the bandsaw. That way I can flip it around and take care of the other side. Status check with how it's looking. It's still a little bit warm. But so far, it at least looks really close to what it's supposed to be. Let it cool down and... Uh, All right, I can touch them all now. Let's see our outside here. 3 3.385, 3.386, 3.385. The outside looks good. Three point three zero oh, three three, three point zero oh, four seven. So this is a little bit deeper than this one is. Not exactly sure why. I don't know if that's going to be a problem or not. But as this one is just sort of my prototype to see how it's going, I think it'll be okay. At least to get it finished. Now I'm going to get the four jaw chuck put on so that I can get this guy in and indicate it. So I got my four jaw chuck put up here and for some reason I could not find the key for this chuck anywhere. And I haven't used it in a little while but uh, I don't know what happened to it. So I spent you know probably close to an hour making a really ugly chuck key. But it fits well and it works well. I went ahead and I've got this guy indicated into here. There's a little bit of bouncing due to the roughness of the surface finish. But each jaw is at almost exactly uh, two thousandth over zero on where I've got it now. Uh, your angle probably has a little bit of parallax if I don't see that quite right. I was using parallels. This is actually just a piece of some uh, package strapping that was on a box that I had somewhere. I just use it as decently springy stuff. So I was just using that as a holder for the parallel. Alright, I'm just going to do some light passes. I'm going to get the outside edge here at least cleaned up. I just kind of touched that just enough on the grinder to uh, bring that tool holder out, of, out and away. Should allow me to get in there.
something didn't work out right. I ended up cutting uh, all the way through. I'll take it off and find out what I did wrong. All right, two things that uh, I think I did wrong. One was on that particular operation. I was not watching close enough the inside lip here. So I was just trying to bring this to a point and for some reason this just didn't look like it was coming to a point yet and I ended up going too far with it obviously and ended up cutting through so basically scrapped this part but at least I learned something on that particular part is to not go by my eyeball when I was looking down and through here it looked like I still had a long ways to go until I saw it bust through this edge here so I need to watch that a lot closer. The other lesson that I learned, don't just compare everything to one. There's at least two different styles of these rings. And this one here is a significantly beefier style. It still has the same first set of features that I did, but then this outside feature here is a much shallower angle and a lot thicker leftover part you look at the the two this one would actually be a lot easier to make so I think I'm gonna go ahead and on the second one I'll try doing it this way I don't know if I'll bother uh, filming that but once I get one done I'll do uh, a little comparison and we'll see if it actually works anyone's ever seen these it's the it's called the bug assault or something like that but basically it uses salt and you can use it to shoot bugs. I use it mostly for spiders and stuff around the um, ceiling in the in the shop. It actually works pretty well. Uh, also, a great way to kill flies. Good quality uh, product overall. Uh, I'm a fan. Not sponsored. Anyway, so after the the failed one, I went ahead and doing basically the exact same process, only not quite as deep. I realized what my problem was on this one. Uh, the way the light was set up, there was a shadow in here that looked like I still had a long ways to go. So every time I took a cut, because it was a shadow, the shadow would move a little bit more. So I kept cutting and cutting until I accidentally cut through the little ridge area. So knowing that that was a problem, when I went through and did the others, I ended up doing four more so far. I was able to keep an eye on that and realize where I was at so I could start actually measuring sooner and get all of my dimensions to the right settings. So I've done that. I've given a couple of these a try in the machine. They work pretty well. So I'm rel relatively happy. This one I put some cold blue on and then kind of run rubbed it down with some tool oil. Overall I think this will definitely work and I should have enough material to make between five and seven more of these. So that'll be my plan, at least for now. And I'll have at least, you know, 10 to 12 extras of these. All right. Thank you. Like and subscribe if you like the video. And uh, I will see you again in the next one.